you for coming. Uh, please tell us how is Hot Pants, the musical, coming along, you know, and what are the kinds of developments uh, that has been going on so far, and how different is the previous version of the Hot Pants? Well, when Annie Peck uh, invited me to uh, direct a new production of Hot Pants, I had to take a very good long look at it because um, it had not been done for since '97, and um, I needed to, uh, you know, I was still quite new at writing in, the, in those days, and I wanted to to look and see whether it's still relevant. So last year, sometime middle of last year, I decided I started looking at it and started to rework it, and uh, we've had readings, we've had, I've looked at the songs, I've actually taken out some songs, I've put in some new songs. So I would say that it's been reworked substantially, um, but the essence of it has been retained. The, the fun essence of it and, and uh, the fact that it's a, it's a light-hearted comedy musical, that has been retained. But um, I would say that, because I haven't done it for so long, I'm looking at it as a new work. Amazing. Now, you spent a lifetime uh, for the last four years as a composer, artist, how do you see yourself uh, uh, today and, and looking back at the past, have you made an impact and a change of what Singapore is and the world today? Have you made a difference? Have you, do you think you have made a difference today? I'd like to think that all the efforts that I put in when I was younger to sort of create, um, help to create an entertainment scene in Singapore on the one hand and on the other to find uh, my Singapore identity, to try to identify what is a Singaporean through pop culture and music. I hope that, that those efforts have uh, helped in some way to, to um, make you know, the industry what it is today. And um, I've, I've been very, um, how would you say, uh, like almost stubborn in pursuing what I believe in and not giving up, in, you know, in the face of uh, or even in the face of a lack of uh, interest in Singapore music, I just kept pressing on, you know, and I think uh, it's a message I like to give to young musicians anyway. Mm. But um, the main thing I've learned is that whatever it is we do as Singaporeans, we need to, to do it as Singaporeans. I think that's very important because that's the thing that will set us apart. And I'm hoping that the industry today will be a Singaporean entertainment industry that uh, is different from, from other countries. We have a problem, a big problem is because we don't really have, you know, a strong language. That we, English is the main language that everybody uses um, and, and writes their words in. Or there's Chinese and of course, you know, there's China to compete with. So if we are borrowing cultures, I think we, we need to find our soul and our spirit that, that makes us different and yet adopting all these other cultures. And I think that is a very important element in creative work in Singapore today that will make us different, that identifies us. Amazing. Now, you, you spoke about identity. How has Hot Pants influenced the culture of Singapore? And how does that relate to your philosophy, especially fashion? Because you actually inculcated, uh, inculcated fashion in Hot Pants and they look really unique. Uh, how, how has that, you know, uh, transpired? To me, fashion and music are linked. And I've always grown up and uh, sort of moved, on, moved ahead by looking at fashion and music concurrently. I am a fan of both. I studied fashion design and I'm a musician. And I believe that the trends, when trend, how trends change are interlinked. The 70s was a very important period for me. I mean, Hot Pants is set in the 70s. It was a time when uh, Singapore was going through very big changes in terms of uh, catching up with the rest of the world. I think in the 60s, we, we lagged behind a lot, but in the 70s somehow, there was, uh, you know, it picked up speed. And being a teenager at that time, it, it, uh, the, that, that whole period um, inspired me greatly simply because things were changing and fashions were changing for example hot pants i use hot pants as a symbol of the change because when it first appeared i remember it was so shocking to to people here 
and the fashions of the 70s are actually quite horrendous. <laughs> they not something that I, I want to promote, but it's just part of the whole era. Uh, and it's, you know, I'm using the, the change of fashion as, well, as I said, a symbol of change and how people had to accept the change through fashion. And it's not a, a, a strong theme, but it is one of the themes of the musical. It's about change and accepting change so that we can all grow. Now, you spoke about change, and for two decades, uh, who were the influence of creativity in your life and career? Uh, how does that change uh, of philosophy impact you? I think that I am still working today after 40 years. It's because I have always adapted to change and I've always made it a point to know what's going on in the world and how the world is changing so that I can still do something that's relevant because um, it's very dangerous to be stuck in the past and keep you know just not not evolving so I find it very important to, 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 to try to change and yet retain my own sense of self um, Main inf major influences, I would say, in the beginning, right when I was a child, it was Walt Disney, simply because he was such a dreamer. And then when I was a teenager, it was a singer-songwriter, so like Elton John and Joni Mitchell. Uh, but lately, I look at the whole world and what the world is creating and bringing to, to, to us, and uh, just pick and choose, because there's so much to influence me now. I, I don't restrict myself, so everybody inspires me. So, will the hot pants uh, have a, uh, a, a change of fashion soon, at a later part? Do you see, do you see that coming? Well, I don't understand. You uh, mean the, the, the hot, hot pants as yes, an item? Yes, right. Hot pants with the, the musical. Do you think that they, there could be some change to, to some fashion designs in the future? Hot pants is about the 70s, but it's about the early part of the 70s, mm -hmm. before the disco era, yes. okay? which created its own fashion but I don't think there's anything from the early 70s that I want to bring back you know uh, I guess what the musical is about is about how the 60s turned into the 70s because it's set in 1972 um, I think it's about how uh, how Singapore became modern how people became modern but I really don't want that style to come back into fashion but if you talk about hot pants today I think that if you walk on the streets now, you will see girls in shorts that are shorter than the shorts, shorter than hot pants, you know, in the 70s. So I don't think there's uh, any big deal anymore. No, well, you were selecting the cast and the director. What was your criteria? This is an ensemble musical. There are only 10 people. And it's a mother-daughter story, in essence. I needed to find, you know, people who could look like they had. 16 year old children so that was a bit of a challenge but uh, I because uh, I need I need comedians I need people who can be funny and who can sing you know when you only have 10 people you don't have a big chorus to back them up so that was a strong criteria for me people who could sing uh, well but um, nowadays there's a lot more talent uh, available uh, I haven't directed a show since 97 that was the last time I did any casting. And that time it was like, you know, all my friends, whoever, even my brother was in it. You know, whoever I knew who could sing, just come and do it for very little money, I must say, at that point. But today, you know, there's, there's just uh, auditioning for this, um, this, this musical. I, I met so many talented new young actors uh, that was uh, very encouraging. Now, what were your challenges to this project? And did you face any trademark and copyright issues in creating hot pants and, and the music and so on? This musical is entirely written by myself. The, the, the script, the music, the lyrics. So the, I own the copyright, so no problem whatsoever. Amazing. And what will be your one memorable uh, failure in your life before you were successful? This is one question from one of our online fans. Failures are subjective, I suppose. Um, you know, to some people, a very small, small thing could be a huge failure. 
uh, if I look at my career in general, I would say that um, I probably made the right decisions all through my life, even if the results of some of those decisions were not good. The point at which I made the decision was the right decision. It was the only thing for me to do, even though, okay, it, it may not have been successful in the end. So I think uh, you can't be, you, you, you hope to be successful in every project, but I don't think it's possible. And if it is, you're very lucky. But if it's not, you just move on. So I can't pinpoint one thing. Uh, but if I had to, from, not from a career point of view, from a personal point of view, I would say that um, I wish that I sometimes didn't let my work get the better of me. Because you know how I'm a bit of a workaholic and I'm a bit maybe overdriven, you know. Um, and sometimes you just forget about your personal life and your family and friends and things like that. You just hammer through your work as if it's the most important thing in the world. And it is at the time, but I think we always need to look at everything in perspective. We have one last question that's one of the students that uh, sent to us, and that is, um, Dear Mr. Lee, you know, what are your three key advice would you give about success in life and career uh, pertaining to hot pants and many other productions that you have produced? Um, I don't think I can answer that question just based on hot pants because it's just one oh, yes. one musical. I mean, if you look at hot pants and the message of hot pants is is that change is important. We have to accept the change to grow, and sometimes we it's about acceptance. You know, accepting how other people have changed and and you know, uh, like mothers have to see their daughters not as babies anymore. But that's a hot pants issue. But based on that, I mean, if I if I base my answer on just success in general. Um, I would say the key thing is that it sounds very cliche but you have to believe in yourself because no one else is going to basically you have to look after yourself that is a kind of a very broad and general statement but um, I feel that a lot of people the young people that I meet today don't have any dreams they have no strong passion or for anything so they're just floating through life and so if you go through life like that you're not going to get anything back if you want to get somewhere or you want to get something, you have to aim for it. But uh, so many young people like me do not have this any aims. And they're just looking for the next thing and just hoping to find something. You're not, it, it won't be just there for you to pluck. I mean, um, in fact, most of the things will be up beyond your reach. You have to sort of start climbing up the tree, you know. Uh, you have to start... Um, if you, if you really don't, I, I know there's a big problem for a lot of kids. They don't know what they want to do. You ask them what they want to do. I have no idea what I want to do. They all tell me that. That is impossible. I, I do not believe that for a moment that people don't know what they want. They probably do, but it's just they're afraid to address it. It's too impossible. They, they bury it. I think you have to be strong. You have to be brave enough to dig it up and look at it because you may find that it's not as impossible as it seems. Um, it seems impossible only because you buried it so far. It's so well hidden that you can't even dig it up. But make the effort to dig it up and look at it. And one of the ways to, to, to do that is actually, I mean, it's not physically digging, but you have to open your mind and, 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 and uh, talk to people and make, make a positive approach towards the thing that you want to do. You can't just sit. A lot of people sit and wait for the chance to come. It's never going to come because if you don't know what it is, the chance may walk right in front of you and you don't notice it. So I think it's important to identify it. That's the first step. The second step, of course, is to go for it. I mean, you won't get it right away. And a lot of uh, people, even career people, I find are very impatient if they do not get their goal. If they don't get what they want immediately, they tend to give up. And that's not how I got where I am. I am now. If I gave up, I would have given up long ago. I would have given up when every reviewer told me to give up. I had reviewers tell me to stop doing better. I, I should just give up writing music. But you just have to keep at it. That's the other thing that's, that's very, very important. And I suppose the third thing is, um, is that um, once you have it, 
um, you have to develop it. I mean, you can't just... I guess the main message I'm making is that you have to work quite hard at whatever it is you want to do. There's a lot of people who are afraid of working hard, who do not want to work hard, who, who want the easy way out. And then it may come short term, but then, you know, if you want to sustain it, also you have to put some effort in it. So don't be afraid of working. And so